uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, if you find a folder that has a nursing bill in it, just disregard it. I'll get you the right folder because I'm doing that one next. So hopefully you have the right information. Uh, in front of you, you do have a folder that has a committee substitute in it, as well as the fiscal note, as well as uh, a chart that I've created for, for your reference. So that's the information that I will be addressing this morning. So Mr. Chair, members of the committee, it is my pleasure this morning to have the opportunity to present the committee substitute primarily for House Bill 1041 to you. I will be going over the specific changes in the substitute bill, which are primarily technical and uh, language changes in the bill itself. This particular bill addresses three needs that have developed throughout the years regarding the practice and of uh, the paying prevailing wage rates. The first is a need for, re for reported wage rates for counties. The second is that we do need wages reported. And the third is that we need more consistency in worker training, licensure, registration, certification for work that's performed. Regarding the first need, there is a provision in the bill that would establish a prevailing wage rate for counties that lack a reported rate for a specific occupational title. The prevailing wage rate for that title would be the wage rate that is most commonly paid as measured by the number of hours worked at each wage rate for that occupational title within all Missouri counties that are adjacent to that county. The definition of adjacent county is one having a boundary that touches the boundary of another county being determined. Obviously we do know that there are some wage rates for specific occupational titles of which there may be little to no reporting of those wages. So this takes care of that hole in the system. The thought obviously is that if we use wage rates from adjacent counties, then it does provide a more accurate rate for that geographical area. The second need that needs to be addressed is one regarding wages being reported. There is a requirement in the bill that a company that wishes to participate in the wage survey process uh, and enter in a contract with a public body must participate in the wage survey process for the previous reporting period. If they have not performed any work that they can report, then they need to provide an affidavit that would indicate that they have not been participating or engaging in any construction work during that period. Reporting is required only for those companies who wish to participate and engage in public works projects. The thought behind it is obviously more participation in the wage survey process results in increased accuracy and the prevailing wage rate for that particular geographical area. You know, currently, the most commonly paid wage rate may not be the most commonly reported wage rate. There's a chart in the folder. I did a very, very quick non-scientific comparison of primarily Southeast Missouri counties of the first occupational title under wage order number nine that's online for asbestos worker, that being the first occupational title listed. You can see that it varies from $14 per hour to $37.26. And throughout Southeast Missouri, I would doubt that the cost of living varies as much as might be reflected in the different hourly rates that are shown here along with the fringe benefit rates. And if you look at the counties on the second section below that, obviously those are the most populated counties or some of them in the state. And you see a couple of the rates in Southeast Missouri are comparable to that particular wage rate as well. And I know this could be a concern for some businesses, but uh, being a small business owner for many, many years, participating in prevailing wage jobs occasionally over those many, many years, our company was started in 1959, I am committed as a small business owner to playing my part in the solution on this. Uh, so I'm willing to take the responsibility to do that so that we have more accurately reflected wage rates for our geographic areas <coughs> in the state. The third is the need uh, for consistency in worker training, licensure, and registration. So there is a requirement that employees who would engage, uh, employees of a public body, who would engage in performing construction work we require the training, the professional registration, the licensure, or the certification and comply with all the local, state, and federal 
laws relating to that training, licensure, certification, or registration. The thought behind that is we would have highly qualified workers performing the work requiring that training. And the overall win, win on that is obviously with increased wage reporting, reflecting more accurate wages, our public entities could continue to be good stewards of tax dollars while supporting their local small business who support them. The committee substitute bill, the minor changes that are made on pages one and two, it removes the words trades council language and the date in those two sections in 290.210. There are also two separate clarifications, one on page five, one on page seven, separating the heavy and the highway construction work from the changes that are being made in the regular construction rates. And finally, it replaces the word union with collective bargaining agreement and replaces non-union with non-collective bargaining agreement throughout the section on page eight. Finally, the fiscal note on this bill is zero. Thank you for the opportunity to present and I would certainly entertain any questions.